Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you humbly and reverently in that mighty name that I love to mention. That name that I love to utter. The name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the privilege, for the honor to utter the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. Lord, speak through these lips of clay unto this people. Give illumination unto my mind and direction unto my spirit. And may every ear be a listening ear and every heart a receptive heart. And Lord, I just come against wandering minds. And Lord, I just thank you that they will stay fixed upon your word this evening. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that the devil is defeated. And I bind every hindering spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ and command you to leave these grounds in Jesus name. Go! And Lord we just thank you for the angels. We thank you Father for your spirit and for the anointing of God that is present in this place and I thank you Father in Jesus name that we won't be the same as we walk out of here. In Jesus name and everybody said Amen. Amen. Well I don't know about you I sure am excited. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I want to talk to you. I have a word for you tonight. The Lord spoke to me this past week. I mean, you know that God speaks to us. Amen? Amen? Aren't you glad? And here's what it was. You can have as much as God as you want. Amen. And many people, they have all they want of God. Matter of fact, you, right now, you and I, listen to me, and don't check out on me, because you're going to come to a choice at the end of this service. Right now, you have all the God that you want. Everybody in here, you have all the God you want. If you want more of God, you can get more of Him. You can, but you can have as much of God as you want. It's up to you. You have a choice. Many people are, are, are comfortable where they're at, God. And then many people are not. They want more. But what I want to talk to you about this evening is you can get so close and have so much of God that the very hedge of God saturates you. And all of a sudden you will have visions, you will have dreams, you will have experiences with God that no one else has because you want more of Him. But there are people in the church they are comfortable where they're at with God. That's all, that's all the God they want is what they already have. And you will never have no more of God whatever you are content with. Amen. Go with me real quickly to James chapter 4. God is bringing many of you in here. I've made my choice, and I want God. Amen? I want, listen, I've told the Lord in, in time past, I says, God, if I can't have the supernatural, send someone else. Because you got the ordinary out there, but God is a supernatural God. Amen, Ron? Are you there at James chapter 4? James chapter 4. Oh, glory to God. Thank God for His Word. Amen? James chapter 4, and I want you to look. I want you to look at number, let's just, just look at verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. Many of you can quote this verse, but let's just look at it and receive it in the heart. Verse 7 says, and we're going to read 7 and 8. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Many people are not submitted to God. I'm talking about people in the church. They're submitted to the world. They're submitted to something else. They say they love God, but there's more a percentage of something else that has their attention instead of the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I was preaching one time and the Lord brought this verse to me and he said a lot of people resist me and submit to the devil. Amen. Amen. No, the word of God says that you and I are to submit
submit to God and resist the devil. Resist temptations. Resist bad thoughts. Resist attacks when they come to you. Amen? Yeah. And so we see here that God is saying through his apostle James, the Holy Ghost is saying, submit yourself therefore to God. That means your whole life. Not, a part, not partial of it. Not 10% of it. Not 20% of it. But all of your life to God. Why? Because you need him. There's coming a time, there's coming a testing time, there's coming a trial time, there's coming a time where the devil's going to like, where Jesus said to Peter, he says, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I pray for you that your faith fell not. There's coming a time where Satan's going to desire to sift you. I've seen it over the years, and every church I've been in, people would come to church, they would get rooted and grounded, but all of a sudden they're gone. Why? Because they weren't aware of the enemy. They weren't vigilant. They weren't sober. And so the enemy came in like a flood and stole them out of church and stole their faith until finally they're no more in church, but they're indulging themselves in worldly things. So we see here that submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now look at verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. In other words, you draw near to God and He will draw near to you. If you don't draw near to Him, He's not drawing near to you. Amen. See, we think, God, I need you. God is saying, draw near to me. Yes. That's why I said, you can have as much of God as you want. It depends on you. You know, we've heard in the past, I've heard of people having uh, manifestations of the Spirit, called up to heaven, visions, dreams, translations, uh, divine protection like Daniel in the, oh thank you Lord for bringing that to me, like Daniel in the lion's den, he prayed how many times a day? Three. Thank you Russell. Some of God's people don't even pray one time a day Russell. He prayed three times a day till finally his trial came, they thrust him into the lion's den, not one touched him. Now, why? Because he drew near to God in prayer in the morning and in noon and in the evening. He was drawing nigh to God. And it made a difference in Daniel's life. Yeah, yeah. And you know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew children. They wouldn't bow down to the image, Rhonda. But they made a choice that they were going to draw near to the God of Abraham. They was already near to him. To the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Beverly. They served him. And all of a sudden, when this music was played, everybody was to bow down and worship this image that Nebuchadnezzar set up. But they wouldn't do it. Their allegiance was to God. Until finally Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was wroth. And he heated the furnace seven times more hotter than it was. And the men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be burned, the fire slew them men. And they cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Why? Because their time of trial and temptation came to them. It's coming to you too. It's coming to everyone upon the earth that makes a choice to draw near to God. You have a choice tonight. You can have as much of God as you want. And so the men of old that had experiences with God... I remember hearing as a kid, I heard this was different words, but it was they paid the price. They paid the price. You know what I mentioned this morning about Brother Irwin? He was in the hotel room, and he, he set up. He set up, and you and your mother, many mothers in here know what's going on with their children. Because you have an intuition. And you know a lot of times what's going on with your children, even when they're grown. My mama would call me and start asking me questions, fishing. Because she knows something's going on. Why? Because there's a closeness that a mother has to her children that no one else has. Amen. And so you have to understand something. He was in his hotel room. And he stood up. And he sensed King's life was in danger. And the Spirit of God spoke to him, Connie, and says, lay back down. Because you obeyed me, he's coming back from off that trip. I said that to you to say this. That man drew near to God. And God drew near to him. You're going to need God in this life. Matter of fact, if you live in this world where Satan is God, according to 2 Corinthians, what is it, chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, little g, or the God of this age, another 
translation says, has blinded the minds of those which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine to them. Satan is called the God of this world, this age. Do you remember when Jesus was being tempted? Remember? Who tempted him? Who showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, all this will I give you if you will worship me. And then Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord God and him only. That was a temptation. If it wasn't in Satan's power, it wouldn't be a temptation. You have a choice. You can settle where you're at in God or you can go forward with God. You have a choice. Where you're at right now, that's all the God you want. You and I want is where we're at. You can have more of God if you want, but you have to draw near to Him. You've got to make the step. You've got to pray. You've got to read the Word of God. You have to fast when God says fast. You've got to go when God says go. Amen, Russell? Yes. Well, look at verse 8 again. Draw nigh to God or near to God. Listen, and He will draw near to you. That ain't all that verse says. In order to draw near to God, he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. you got to quit sinning. If you want a relationship with Jesus, you can't be sinning. Amen. you got to live holy and consecrated unto him. If you're going to draw near to God, you got to get sin out of the life. Amen. you got to cleanse your hands of sin and walk with God. That does not mean I want to... You might not miss it, but when you trip up, miss it, or sin, you repent quickly. Amen. There's some people that have died and left the earth. You know why? Because they weren't cleaving to the Lord. They weren't drawing near to the Lord. Many people, there's many people across this land, they go to church, and when they go to church, social club. How you been today? But if you preach the gospel and you decide to draw near to God, see, if the choice is yours and mine. It's yours and mine. Every person in church has as much as God as they want. But you can have more. It's up to you. And he says there, draw near to God and I will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And look at this. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. There's many people I've met over the years, my brother and sister, one minute they want to serve God. They say, I'm going to serve God. They're in church. They're doing good. And they say, you know, they're double-minded. They're out. They say, well, I don't know if I want to sell out to God. You can't afford not to. Amen. You can't afford not to give your life to God. There's somebody out there that wants to devour you and steal from you and kill your family. And kill you and rob you. I know that I'm getting kind of loud. But man, this was given to me by the Lord. And it challenged me. I called Nikki. I said, Nikki, come here. And she came in there with Zach. I got to share with you what the Lord put on my spirit. And I shared it with her. And if he shared it with me, I want to share it with you. Amen. Why? Because I want God. If I can't have the supernatural, send someone else, I'll go sit down in a pew. I'll do something else for the rest of my life. If I can't have the supernatural, if I can't experience visions, dreams, translations, and experience Him like Paul said, and the power of His resurrection, He'll send me. Because that's just religion. Amen. That's just religion. And many people go to churches and they're dead. And then many people don't know nothing about serving God. Just because you come to church doesn't mean you're serving God. That's the first step. That's good. But you serve God out these walls. You be a witness for Him. You live for Him. You don't live a sinful life if you want to draw near to Him. I don't know about you, but I need it. I could have died many times and He spared my life from being shot in the bars and toe halls. And now that he's called me into his kingdom and delivered me out of the kingdom of darkness, I want to serve him. Amen. And not just come in here and preach to you and live one way. Out, I want to serve him out there. Amen. Amen. 
That's my desire. But you know, there's many people that come to church, but then again, you've got to live better for God outside these four walls than you do in here. Do you witness for Him? Do you pray over your food? That's just little things. When God speaks to you outside these four walls, do you obey? Or do you rebel? If you rebel, you're not drawing near to Him. Many people are double-minded. You know, sometimes somebody might say, uh, they heard a voice say, give somebody a thousand dollars and started rebuking the devil when it's God speaking to them. They say, Lord, I want to obey you. But you know people with money. And then they start rebuking. Well, if God's speaking to you to give a thousand dollars, give it. If he's speaking to you to give a dollar, give it. If he's speaking to you to give ten, give it. You're going to obey. Why? Because there's a blessing that he's going to bless you with. I remember the guy that I came up under, a man came to his town. A man came to his town, a minister of the gospel. This is during Christmas time. He just had enough money to get to a certain place in Texas. And he found Brother Irwin. Brother Irwin was pastoring an assembly of God church. He got a hold of him. He went and picked him up, brought him to the parsonage. And the Lord spoke to Brother Irwin and says, I want you to give this minister this evangelist such and such money. Brother Irwin says, Lord, it's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. Money was tight. I think it was, if I remember correctly, this was during the Depression or right after the Depression. But he obeyed God. Now I want you to get this. God has a good memory. Amen. Do you agree? Yes. God has a very excellent memory. Well, two years went by chance, two years. The Lord used Brother Irwin in a, it was a stretcher case or wheelchair, one of the two. It was a miracle of healing. God flowed through him to this person. The Lord spoke to him, listen, and said, Son, if you wouldn't obey me two years ago and helping my minister out that made it to your tail, I couldn't have used you here. God keeps a record of obedience. The Bible says in Samuel, it's better to obey than obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rounds. God wants you to obey Him. God wants you to draw near to Him. And you, if you don't draw near to Him, nobody else is going to do it for you. I can only do it for me. You need God. Why not give all to it? You have a choice tonight. You can choose to stay where you're at or you can choose to advance and go forward with God. But in order to do so, you can't be double-minded. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Quit sinning. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. You can't say I'm serving God one week and get excited about it and then next week be double-minded and think about leaving the church. That's not drawing near to God. That's double-mindedness. You want God on your side? You're going to have to give Him all. You know, somebody says, well, I've given God my heart. He wants your life. I've heard that over the years. Oh, i am giving God my heart. He wants, he wants your life. He wants all of you, not just a percentage of you. Amen or oh me. Still so, ain't it, Brother Joey? Well, what about Romans? Go with me real quickly to Romans 8, 26. We're talking about you draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. You can have more of God. You don't have to be content where you're at. You can enjoy the supernatural. You can have the spectacular. You can have things and see things that nobody else, well, only a few do. You can enjoy that, but you have to make a step toward God. You know, when, the, when my mother was taken over to the state of Florida and shown the state of Florida, and the Lord started speaking to her, the cities that were, were saved, and where she saw Florida break all that, she didn't get that because she didn't pray and read her Bible or pray in the Spirit. She got that because she did those things. Amen? She got those things because she, excuse me, she got those things because she prayed in the Spirit. She got those things because she reads her Bible. She got those things because she's drawing close to God. You want to have supernatural manifestations? 
You have to draw close to God. You have a choice. You have as much as God. You have as much of God as you want. And you can have more. Amen? Amen. It's up to you. Romans 8, 26. You know, we quoted, and the Holy Ghost gave me this a number of years ago. And I've heard people say this, and I've even said it myself, but we took it out of context. Romans 8, 28. You know Romans 8, 28. You quoted it. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Did you know many times we take that verse out of setting? Look at verse 26. Back up two verses. Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, also helps our infirmities. For we, the church, you and I, know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit, Holy Spirit, capital S, itself or himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered in our in our natural language. What translation says? Now look at verse 27. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. Now look, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And then the next verse, St. Paul was writing a letter. He didn't put in verse 27. And then Paul went on to say, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Why? That's when you pray in the other spirit. Keep it in context. God gave you this one day. Many people quote that. You've seen Christians that all things didn't work out for the good for them. That's right. Because they're not praying in the spirit as they should. When you pray in the spirit, when you pray in tongues, you're praying the will of God out. You're praying things out that your mind don't know nothing about. You're praying your ministry. You're praying people you might meet. You're praying people out of hell. You're interceding for people that might be sick. You are praying the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Somebody says, I don't pray in the Spirit no more. Well, repent and start doing it. I've had to repent for things that I used to do. And slacked up all. Don't look at me so sanctified. You have to. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You want things to work out for good. Somebody says, I don't pray at other time in other tongues. Well, start praying in other tongues. It's a gift. Yeah. You receive it by faith. Thank God for it. Your tongue wants to say something that's not English. Yield to it. Yeah, but it don't sound. It don't, of course it's going to sound strange to you when you're not used to praying in other tongues. Amen. Amen, brother? You want all things to work together. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. And one way you draw near to God is praying in the Spirit. Yeah. One way that you and I draw close to Him is we pray in the Spirit because we're praying out His will for your life and my life. I don't know about you, but when I wanted the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I was going to church, get hands. I could have spoken in tongues way before I did. I thought the Holy Ghost was just going to possess me. And I was awakened by, by a supernatural manifestation one night by the Spirit of God. And still didn't speak in tongues after that because I thought he was going to do it again. And I had to help have somebody to help me. After being awakened out of the sleep and hearing audibly, audibly, like you hear me speak now, right here in my belly, coming up through my solemnness. And I didn't speak in tongues after that. I thought he was going to override my wheel and just come up on me. And somebody still had to help me. How dumb can you be? I know I've learned a little bit since then. Amen. But I tell you, I didn't know much. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Get a hold of it. Be a help of me. Amen. Glory to God. So I'm trying to help you. I'll be worshiping the Lord. Be driving. Be at the house. Or be here just glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And worshiping my God. Amen. My tongue wants to say something that's not English. I yield to it. Amen. I don't keep from it. That's what's wrong with a lot of people. Holy Ghost comes upon them and they won't let go of their tongue for nothing. 
Well, if you want all things to work together for good for you, and you want to pray the will of God out for your life, you need to pray in the Spirit. You need to pray the will of God out. You need to pray in other tongues. Did you know this? Listen, all through the early church, and we're still in the book, I don't like to say the acts of the apostles. It's the acts of the Holy Ghost yeah. through the apostles and other men. We're still living in the acts of the Holy Ghost. And did you know in the early church, whenever anyone was born again and received Christ, they asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? It was almost a necessity. If you was a believer, you spoke in tongues back then. Whatever happened, religion came in. Thank you, Lord. Here's what I heard the Spirit say. When I said religion came in, the supernatural left. Because religion filled the church. Religion filled the church. There's no speaking in tongues. There's no miracles. And so religion flooded it. And people come to church and sit down and don't believe in miracles today. And they live like they did before they were saved. There's no transformation. There's no new birth. People think because they went to church and they gave, they were right with God. Yes, it's good to give and it's good to come to church. But you're not going to heaven just because you come to church and you give. you got to be born again. Amen. Amen. You got to be born again. My nature changed on the inside of me. Amen. Yeah, you will make a mistake. I make mistakes since I've been preaching this evening. You're going to make mistakes. I made them this morning. My mouth said one thing different than what I was thinking. You have too. Amen. Amen. But what do you do? You learn from it. We all make mistakes. Lord, I remember one time hearing a minister, he pastored, and he, after he grew a little bit in the Lord Christian, over the years he started looking back about his early years. He says, Lord, forgive me. I see some things where I could have did better. And the Lord spoke to him and said, Son, I was looking at your heart the whole time. He didn't know he missed it. He was doing the best he could. He said, the Lord spoke to him and said, Son, I was looking at your heart the whole time. See, God's looking at your heart. But the Bible does say, he that knoweth to do good and does it not to him is sin. Yeah. If you know that God is speaking to you to get up early in the morning and pray for a brother and sister. You know, I often say sometimes, people used to criticize me, you know, back when a couple of years ago. And I was thinking, how many people was praying for me? You know, it's easy to criticize someone. But how many people in the church was actually praying? God is good, isn't he? If you want everything to work out for the good for you, you need to pray in other tongues. Somebody says, I never have. You can't do it tonight. Go home and say, God, it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Like Jesus is a gift. Say, God, I ask you to fill me with the Holy Ghost where I'm speaking tongues. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I want it. I've asked for it. And I believe I've got it right now because I've asked. And you said in Matthew 7, 11, 7-Eleven. He used to tell some story. 7-Eleven. You said in Matthew 7-Eleven, if, if you then being evil, it says, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask you? God will give you the Holy Spirit. Another place in Luke, it says, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask you. All you got to do is ask and start worshiping God and your tongue wants to say something that's not English, yield to it. Yeah. It won't be long. You'll be praying in the Spirit every day and you'll be loved. Amen. Amen. Look at Matthew 5, 6. Look at Matthew 5, 6 real quick. You're going to be challenged. If you want to go with God, you can. If you want to experience the supernatural, you can. You Listen. I need it. I can't live without it. I need it. You know what? Don't be deceived. You need it. Your children need it. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. You need it for your children. Because you serve God, your children could have been snatched by the enemy, but God raised the standard against them. Because of you. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Lord just brought to me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns you. In the Scriptures and Psalms, the Bible says the Lord will perfect that which concerns you. If it concerns you, it concerns Him. You're the apple of His eye. And that's why many children that did not walk with God, but their parents did, their lives were spared. But there come a time where God says, you need, you need to make a choice whether you will serve me or not. Now that's not the case with everyone. You understand that. So don't go out of here. If you don't serve God and say, because my mom and daddy does, I'm okay. God will look at that heart and say, I'll see where your motives are. That won't be the case with you. Amen? God knows the hearts. You there at Matthew? Matthew 5? Go to Matthew 5, verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall what? If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, God's going to fill you. And when God fills you with His Spirit, guess what's coming with it? Supernatural manifestations. Holy laughters. Burdens lifted. Miracles following you. Divine protection in front of you, behind you, to the right, to the left. Blessed are those that hunger. See, they're blessed. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they're blessed. Why? They're going to be filled with God. What better, what most, that's so awesome to be filled with Him. You know, I go back and I mention Michael Yeager. Michael Yeager is the minister of the gospel. And he goes to this house to minister to this woman, Ruby. And he goes and he has another gentleman with him that's in the ministry. And this woman jumps on him, Chance, starts slapping him in the face. And the Spirit of God picks her up and throws her against the wall off of him. Why? Because he serves God this man eat, lives, and breathes. He can, he can, he can quote James, Philippians, a number of epistles verbatim. Why? Because he reads the word of God. And he was telling that story. That man that was with him says, Brother Michael, you got it all wrong. That woman jumped on you, stabbing you in the face with the butcher knife. And the Spirit of God picked her up and threw her again. But the butcher knife, she was stabbing him in the face with the butcher knife, and it didn't even penetrate one layer of skin. <coughs> Why? Because blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled with God. Amen. You know, many people hunger and thirst for worldly things. The bed. The TV. They hunger and thirst after flesh. Material things. Tell you what, the Bible tells me in the 6th chapter of Matthew, verse 33, Seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And what? All these things shall be added. You know what we missed it at? We sought the things first instead of God and they were taken from us. Amen. See, we did it backwards. Where God says, you seek me first. You seek my kingdom. You seek my righteousness. And in doing so, I'm going to add some things to you. Amen. Amen. You remember Solomon? He wanted wisdom, didn't he? And God says, because you asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you riches. Why? Because he sought wisdom from God. And only wisdom comes from God. You have a choice tonight. Matter of fact, it's real evident which choice to make, but many people won't make it. You can have as much of God as you want. The ball is in your hand. God is saying tonight, I'm giving you the choice. You can have as much of me as you want, but it's your decision. It's your choice. If you hunger and thirst after Him, you're going to be filled with heaven. You're going to be filled with heaven. Like we were studying this morning, I don't mean you accidentally, I think I don't mean you go out there and do it, but if you go to a restaurant and they didn't purify, it's not going to affect you. You can eat some. 
And it won't affect you. You get bitten. It won't affect you. Why? Because it can't affect someone that's full of God. Amen. 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 Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. You know, if people only knew the high that you can get from God, you start hungering and thirsting after Him and get full of Him, you're going to be called up. I ain't talking about a religious experience. I'm not a religious man. I'm a saved man. There's a difference. Religion will hate you. Many people, religion is going to church and never mentioning the name of Jesus. And criticizing men and women of God that preach the gospel. Amen? How many remember Uzziah? He was 16 years old in 2 Chronicles. And he took the place of his dad. And he started, well, just go with me real quickly to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, real quickly. I want to look at verse 5, 2 Chronicles chapter 28. I want you to just put your eye on it. And then I will look at one verse of Scripture in Psalms and we have closed. But anyway, if you look at 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 1, you'll find out that all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16, he, he, look, he was 16 years old. He reigned for 52 years, I believe it was. 16 years old and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. Think about that. 16 years old. 50, he reigned 52 years. But look at verse 5. What I want to share with you. Look at this. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding and visions of God. And as long look, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. What about if he quit seeking God? It says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper in his reign. As king, you want to prosper? You want to prosper? You have a choice to make. If you seek God and you draw near to God, there's going to be things happening to you and blessings coming to you that no, and you would look, you would say, this was the hand of God. There would be times where the enemy tried to take you out and you would know for sure this was the hand of God. He, he stopped the enemy from taking us out. There will be times that divine protection you will know. There will be times that God will bless your body and give you supernatural strength and supernatural health. Why? Because you were full of Him and you drew near to Him. Psalms 34. Look at Psalms 34. Real quickly. <laughs> Isn't God good? Amen. Look at verse 4. No, I'm going to read verse 1. Verse 4 is what I want you to see. Look at verse 1. Look what David said. I will bless the Lord. Now here's how he drew near to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Some people can't bless Him once a week. Or once a month. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? His praise shall what? Continually be where? Right here. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Look how he drew near to God. Look how David drew near. He worshiped God. His praise was continually in his mouth. My soul shall make her boast to the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Look at verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And look at this. And let us exalt His name together. Would you say that He's made a choice to draw near to God? You would say that by continually worshiping Him. Look at verse 4. I sought the Lord... And he heard me and delivered me from all, not some, from all my fears. From all my fears. 
He sought the Lord. How do you seek the Lord? By drawing close to Him. How do you seek God? Turning on the TV and watching a three hour movie and never praying? Staying out of church and not coming to church and not reading your Bible and not praying? Is that how you seek God? <coughs> you go home, you get up, your feet touch the floor. You start worshiping and praising Him. Whenever you think about it in the house in the new time, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You worship Him. You thank Him. When you see God, you're drawing close to Him. That's I like that. If you don't pray, you will become the prey. That's good. I like that. If you don't pray, you will become the prey. Think about it. I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from my fears. You see God, He'll deliver you. He'll deliver you, but you got to make the choice. you got to make the choice. What am I going to do? Am I going to stay where I'm at, the Lord? Well, you can't afford not to go further. You can't afford not to seek Him first in His kingdom. And if you seek Him first and you get full of Him, you're going to know things supernaturally by the Spirit. And He's going to protect you. Amen? Last verse of Scripture. I said that one was. This one is. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You're going to like this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to look at verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Look at this. This is Paul speaking. It is not expedient for me that was to glory. Look what he said. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Paul said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Why? He saw God. He lived. He breathed Christ. His goal was Christ. He lived and breathed Christ. And by doing so, look what happened to him. Go on reading. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. We would say above. We would say 14 years ago. So he said above 14 years ago, meaning it was longer than 14 years ago. Whether in the body. I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one called up to the third heaven. You know what the third heaven is? It's the paradise of God. Yes. Look at verse 3. I knew such a man. Paul is speaking, whether in the body or out of the body. Why? Because as far as you're concerned, you look just like you do up there as you was in the body. Because you have a spiritual body similar to this one. And Paul couldn't tell the difference. That's why Paul said, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Listen to verse 4. How that he was called up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. How did he experience it? People say Paul's talking about himself. How did Paul experience such experiences called up to the third heaven? How did he, why did he say, I will come to visions I will come to Revelation. And then you hear religion people. But brother, yes. He was an apostle. Yeah. Reason why he was, he obeyed his call. He sought God. Yeah. What about Ananias in the ninth chapter of Acts? The Bible says he was a disciple. And Jesus appeared to him in a vision and told him about Saul, which is later called Paul. He wasn't an apostle, he wasn't a prophet. He wasn't an evangelist, pastor, or teacher. The Bible says he was a disciple. And Jesus appeared to him in the vision. You can have as much of God as you want. It's your choice. Many people don't want as much as God as they want. They're content where they're at. You right now. You right now. Me right now. You have as much as God as you want. Right now, you have as much of God as you want right now. But you can have more. As yes. a matter of fact, some of you need more. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not trying to be somebody's judge. I just know in the spirit. I want more. I'm not content. But there's some of you in here, you really need more of God. Why? Because your family depends upon you. Let's all stand. Chance to move this Praise God. With every head bowed and every eye closed.